what do we mean when we talk about allyship anyway? So an ally would be an advantaged group member who engages in actions that improve the status of the disadvantaged group. Um, so something to highlight here is that they uh, engage in actions towards the uh, collective uh, improvement of the status of the disadvantaged group. So it's not just helping one person who belongs to the group, though that is certainly important, but making moves towards a larger scale improvement. So this could be, for example, influencing policy or changing the company culture. Um, changing the company culture may be formal, but it it could also be informal. But because the I presume that people here are also in positions of relative influence in the organization, what I also encourage you to think about, aside from your becoming an ally, is also influencing those around you to become allies themselves. Because so we, when we can get people to act together, then there's a greater chance of success. Um, so there are several factors in the research that um, have been shown to increase the likelihood of people to take action for um, disadvantaged group members. And these include group identification, moral beliefs, emotions, especially anger, um, and other beliefs and attitudes, especially group efficacy. So I'll talk about that um, in this next portion. Okay. So when we talk about group identification, this could include a lower identification with their own group. So for example, uh, a, a man is more likely to engage in action to improve the situation of women if he doesn't feel very strong ties with other men as a group. Now, there is also a greater likelihood of action if they identify with a disadvantaged group. It's identifying what the struggles and the experiences of the disadvantaged group. So parang I feel for them, I know what they're going through. And that identification could also help um, promote action. Um, but even more powerful would be having a shared identity. For example, your organization can provide a shared identity for both advantaged and disadvantaged group members um, so, so that having the shared identity will be um, to... Um, act in favor or to improve the situation of the other members of the group who may be disadvantaged. Um, and related to that would be what we call a politicized identity. So it's not just any group identity, but one that particularly um, focuses on um, while engaging in political and collective action. For example, an identity such as feminist or identity acts as a straight ally or just a general identity as an advocate would also help. Uh, so aside from, and maybe not aside from, but tied to um, group identity would be moral beliefs. So moral beliefs, particularly um, believing that this issue at hand is part of your core moral beliefs or what we call moral conviction is one strong uh, predictor no, of uh, ally collective action. Uh, so, ang mahalaga dito is tapping, ano yung mahalaga doon sa mga tao within the organization? And how can we um, emphasize that and highlight that in our communication? People's emotions. Now, this may be a bit more challenging, lalo na sa organization level, kasi kung titignan natin yung emotions that are most influential as collective action, if anger is really number one. Um, so particularly anger due to a sense of injustice and a sense of a moral violation. Um, so those emotions are more likely to drive people to action. But we also have to be careful if you want anger to be uh, potent. You have to make sure that the target of anger is clear. The target of anger matters. And we don't want to create greater anger towards a disadvantaged group. While we might think that making the advantaged group feel guilty and ashamed about their actions and their role in um, causing disadvantage, 
it's also tricky to navigate these emotions because sometimes it may lead advantaged group members to focus on restoring their group's reputation rather than on actually improving the situation of the disadvantaged group. And speaking of sustainability, Pride and Joy, though positive, at least in terms of the research on allyship and collective action, mahirap silang isustain. Um, so people may experience feel-good emotions when they engage in action uh, for uh, the disadvantaged group, but realistically, nakakapagod siya. Um, and it's not always fun, fun. It's not always pride marches, uh, which seem fun, no? There's also the hard work involved. And kung pride and joy lang yung main motivation or uh, kung bakit nila ginagawa, mahirap isa sa Mahalaga rin sa usapin ng allyship, yung beliefs and attitudes. So one very uh, widely researched belief would be what we call group efficacy. So believing that the actions of your group um, actually work. Um, so for example, if in your company you have this uh, group of people who are you know, um, advocating for a disadvantaged group, um, if they feel like their actions are doing something to change the situation, mahalaga yon to drive action. And finally, um, and perhaps I think, especially in the context of an organization, napakahalagang itarget na ito, no? yung zero-sum beliefs. Um, yung idea that if we grant the disadvantaged groups or even privileges nga eh, rights, yung feeling nila, inaagawan sila, na if there's more for them, there's less for us. So, um, kapag mas mababa yung belief that it's a zero-sum game, then people are more likely to uh, be encouraged to take action. I would highlight no, that the particular social context counts. So people tend to uh, be less or more likely to engage in action depending on how they see the levels of equality or inequality. Now, one challenge that we see in the research is that there is a possibility if advantage group members think na um, nag-improve na yung situation ng disadvantage group, inaisip na, ah, okay na pala, hindi na kailangan ng action. Okay? So, mahalaga na mabalanse that even if there are victories, so to drive efficacy, we still have a long way to go. Okay? And also important that the advantage group does not feel threatened. Okay? So, in our communications, mahalaga rin yung balance yun. How then can you be a good ally? So I've talked about how you can encourage other people to become allies. But for yourselves, um, ano ba yung, what does good allyship look like? Um, and a central reminder here would be keeping in mind that it's not about you. It's about the people whom you are being allies for. So being a good ally, as I mentioned a while ago, starts with empathy. Ano ba yung nararamdaman nila? Ano yung nararanasan nila? Putting yourself in their perspective. But you don't always have to guess. You can actually ask them yourselves. Let yourselves be guided. It also, um, maybe, it would be important also that you're ready to take the back seat. So, um, we are putting the disadvantaged group at front and center then they should also be able to speak for themselves. It's also important to avoid co-opting the movement. This is this may also be challenging, especially for corporate settings, because we do know that in those settings, you know, the bottom line ma- matters and all that. And sometimes, and we see this talo uh, na sa LGBT movement na lahat na lang may rainbow para makabenta. Um, pero para kanino ba yun? <laughs> para kanino ba talaga yun? So, hanggang kaya, the focus really and the priority is improving their situation. Uh, and maybe tough also to swallow. Keep in mind that um, wala silang utang sa'yo. Sometimes, you know, you might not always get the response that you would like. But it, again, it's not about you. It's about improving a group of people's situation. And... You know, last, I would remind 
people that it's not always easy. Um, but please do stay committed, even and especially when you have nothing to gain. But ultimately, it's really about making people's lives better and contributing to a more fair and just society. So with that, feel free to ask your questions. You can also get in touch with me via email or my Twitter account. Thank you.